So I opened the valve cover on this thing. Probably should have done this much earlier. Um, this has 108,000 kilometers on it. And it looks, um, doesn't look so good. Uh, val the cam journals and everything look good. It doesn't look like they're damaged or anything, but somebody did not change the oil in this thing like they were supposed to. So let's just take a look at one that's been well maintained. Now this one had a, a rod failure, but look at that drivetrain there, or the uh, cam and um, rollers, super clean. We didn't do any cleaning to this. This shows that this engine was well-maintained and serviced properly. This doesn't make me very happy because I'm already so far into this repair that I'm not sure what, what to do. So I'm gonna sit down and have a cup of coffee and think about this. Okay, so we got the new motor here. This is an ASZ motor. We've disassembled it, getting it ready to reassemble. We just have to do some cleanup on the oil pan here. We took the oil pan off because we have to replace this rear seal with the BLS rear seal. We've also got to drill a hole uh, in, the, in the block here for the, for the uh, crank sensor. And I did some measurements, the, uh, the crank, here is thicker than the BLS crank. The rod cap is the same width, but the length is longer and the thickness is thicker. So it's a much stronger rod, which is what my problem was. Um, the oil pump has a much bigger uh, pulley on it. So I'm not sure if that, how, what that changes. It seems like it would just change the the speed at which this pump runs, like maybe runs a little bit slower, I'm not real sure. But my pump had a smaller gear on it. But with this chain that we have, we have to run this larger gear. So I'm not gonna replace that at all. Everything looks the same. The pump looks exactly the same, made by the same company. The only difference is the pickup tube here is plastic on the old one, and the gear is different. So we're gonna be putting a new timing belt on, but we're gonna do that once everything else is done. And um, so right now we're just getting it ready to clean and start reassembly. So now the, the new sensor, you can see I've drilled the first hole here, right up in the top corner. This whole area needs to be taken and removed. Now there's the bolt you can see here, uh, the head of the bolt is there. So this, this fat, there's a little fat area here. That, I think that is the bolt channel. So I can, um, I can go above that. Um, this, this, the face on this side here, I can cut away, but I can't cut that back. That back wall is actually part of the block. So I can cut coming this way and that way, so it's like a triangle here, and then like a little square piece in there. So I'm gonna to try to remove all of that. And this is what it looks like on this motor. As you can see, like this whole area is, is cleaned out. And you can see that's the, the main part of the block, and you can see the oil cooler back in the background there. So I'm just gonna to try to recreate that hole. Okay, so I've got perimeter drilled all the way up, around inside the hole here, and then around the corner. You can see here where I'm real close to the oil cooler inlet. So now I'm gonna make a big, bigger drill bit and just kind of wallow those holes out. And uh, hopefully I can just get this little um, triangle piece just to fall out and then I can use my burr tools to smooth everything up and make it look nice. 
So I've scaled up to the bigger drill bit. And now what I can do, what I'm doing is just moving, moving the drill up and down to, to make the, to make the holes connect together. So you don't need to drill the holes any bigger, just make them come together. You can see how I've done that here. I went in the bottom hole, went up and down, second hole up and down, and it finally just came through. So that's uh, easier than just continuing to go up and up and up. So I went from a, a 3.16, or a 5.32 drill bit up to a 7.32 drill bit. So I went from, I believe I had 5.30 seconds. It might have been 9.64, I can't remember, but I broke that bit. <clears throat> so now I'm using the 7.30 seconds and that seems to be working really good. Okay, so we have the hole. You can see there, that's the uh, bit I'm gonna be using to kind of clean it up. So I'm gonna try to get all that smoothed out. I've got a bunch of different shaped um, burr tools here. All the different shapes, ball, cone head, or a uh, you know rounded head, cone shape, and a really pointy one there. So I'm gonna start with that one and um, try to get it cleaned up and looking really nice like there's never been any drill bits in there. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so this is uh, really close to done. And I just used the, um, the, the barrel. I guess that's what that would be called, the barrel bit. It's just square. It, uh, it's a uh, cylinder, basically. It's round uh, with a square top. And I was able to get all the corners and edges are, are nice and soft. So this, I've, I've softened all the edges. So there's no sharp places where it would cut through wiring vibration any problems I've, I've smoothed everything out there's no ridges from the drill bits so I think I'm gonna put the cone shape one in there and just do just a little bit more cleanup and um, you can see here let me blow it out a little bit That's the bolt hole. That's where this, this old crank sensor goes in. And so that's the edge of the bolt hole right there. So we don't need to go any deeper than that. Um, I'll probably put just a little silicon or something on there, but that just goes into the bolt hole. That's not a hole in the block, but I don't wanna go any further down. Um, just, I don't think I need to. I think the I think the sensor will have plenty of room here now. Cause you have to, there's a screw that you have to be able to get through, get to from this side in case you need to replace that sensor. You don't have to pull the transmission out. So that's really all we're looking for. And I'll show you. So there's a good shot. That is the oil filter housing. there's the oil filter housing so I think we've done a pretty good job you can see it's a little meatier the way they've got it designed here but <clears throat> I don't think that this is a super critical bolt it's just holding the transmission in place and you've got you know bolts on either side of it it should be plenty strong I don't think I'll ever have a problem with that all right so now is now we need to get the motor off this stand and uh, get it hanging and then we can pull this old crank seal out and we'll chest we'll check our new our new seal and sensor setup okay so we're test fitting the old seal we didn't put the um, the ring on just it's just the rubber seal you've got lineup pins on both sides so this can't be in the wrong position it is in one position and you can see here the sensor is going through the block and I've got if you can see there that clearance 
on the bottom side of the plug. That's what we need. It's a little tight toward the back, but I think, I think that's not going to um, affect it at all because we have, we have space all the way around, especially top and sides. But we can also see the bolt, so if we need to replace that sensor, we can. So I think everything is looking really good. So now we've got to put the new seal on, get the bolts in, and well, before I do that, I'm gonna put a little paint inside that hole to cover up that raw metal. So get to that. Okay, so I'm, okay, so I'm attempting to put the uh, rear seal in without the proper tool. So now it comes with this plastic ring and that plastic ring opens the seal up to go around the crank. If you pull this seal, if you pull this plastic piece out, the seal wants to be on the face of the, of the crank, which is uh, not the proper placement. It'll, you know, it folds back the wrong way. So what we want is it to be like going and touching the face like this, not like this. So as you put this piece on, this plastic ring comes out. Now I had to modify the lineup tool here. That goes in the little hole that gives you a, uh, that keeps the, this is what the sensor reads. So this lines everything up perfectly. Now this, this hole, that hole, and there's another mark up here at the top. Um, all of these things should line up. This is just there to keep it lined up. So I had to modify it because it was in front of this plastic piece. If you're using the proper tool, you take this off and install the seal on the tool and then you press it on. But that tool's expensive. I'm probably only doing this once. I may do it twice, but I didn't see the need in buying the tool. And so what I have to do is just get this on and ease it on. So the bolts that hold it on aren't long enough. So these are oil pan bolts and they're just a little bit longer. So I've, I've threaded them in just hand tight. And as you can see here, so it starts pushing, pushing it out. So what I need to do is um, hold this in as I'm, as I'm tightening the screws and once the seal gets on there properly, I'll be good to go. But that's how I'm going to attempt to get this on. Okay, so what I figured out, I'm using the old seal, the old ring. This ring here, that you can see with the hole in it, that's the old ring. And so I put it on there and I'm tapping on that with a hammer. Just tapping it lightly all the way around. And you can see here how far I've already uh, compressed it in. And I mean, it's taking really, really light taps. Nothing real strong, just tapping around so that it goes on evenly. And I'm gonna try to get it seated and then I'll tighten the bolts. Okay, so we found when we're putting the EGR valve on, the way this engine is set up in the caddy, the turbo goes up. Most of the engines, the turbo goes down and this uh, EGR system is mounted differently. So on the caddy, the BLS motor has some, um, some stands built into the engine. So what we've had to do, these are unused bolt holes. So we've built some brackets and threaded so these are, you know, like 10 millimeter thick steel and we're bolting it in with, um, I think these are 10 millimeter bolts. And so what holds this in is just a little six millimeter bolt. So we pulled a bracket off of that hole and put a hole here and we've put a bolt in here and then we're gonna do our six millimeter bolt there. And on the, on the BLS engine, you can see here, this is where it mounted up originally, top and bottom. 
So the these, what would, I don't know what you call them, bungs are missing. So we're having to fabricate uh, for that, for that, uh, those missing, missing holes. So that is, if you're not using an EGR valve, then if you're just deleting the EGR valve, then it doesn't matter. But where I'm located, they check for the things like that. So I have to have it in place. So that's, that is our solution. So we've got those bolted in. I think they're in the correct location. So now I'm going to put in the uh, EGR valve system. Okay, so here it is mounted. We have a bracket behind this pipe. We had to use a flat head screw because other bolts would touch the pipe. And then on this pipe, or on that bolt, you can see we had to grind the head. And we got just a couple of millimeters of clearance there. But I didn't want that touching. We had to use a big washer here. You can see that big washer there that spaced it out enough to get it off the bolt. So that, you know, normally that would be a, a little teeny bit closer, but we had to squeeze that washer in there, put a little pressure on it. So we've got, you know, this, this flex pipe here and this pipe is flexible here. So there's no problem with it having that little bit of teeny pressure on it, but that was not a modification I was expecting. So, slight difference. Now, this oil pipe will get bolted in here and to the bottom of the turbo here. That's the oil return. And then once that's bolted in, I can re-tighten this, this, um, this uh, I believe this, I'm not sure what that is. I think that may be some sort of sensor, temperature sensor. It's a plug of some sort. So I had to loosen that up to get it out of the way of the screw. So once I get that, uh, once I get that screw in and back bolted down, and that's the screw that goes in here, then I can ro rotate this back to where it goes and tighten that nut up. And this side of the motor is going to be fairly complete until we start hooking in radiator hoses and those type things. So, but I've got this hose connected here and here. I need to clean all the pink paint off, so I'm gonna do that tomorrow and do a little bit of cleaning on the turbo, but everything is torqued down. The intake is torqued, intake and exhaust has been torqued to 25 Newton meters. And, uh, and then these are just hand torqued. They have a rubber seal in them. Hand torqued, hand torqued, and hand torqued. So this, this is the EGR, part of the EGR system. So we've got that part done. And um, hopefully tomorrow we can uh, paint, the under, paint the other side of the engine. And we'll be, um, I'm going to paint it yellow. <laughs> Make it look nice. So... I think, uh, I think we're done for today. It's started getting to dusk and it's hard to see. The camera actually shows a lot more light than is actually here. So until tomorrow. So another problem or um, difference in the BLS motor is the exhaust mount. So this these studs here are where the um, catalytic converter coming directly off the turbo the bracket bolts here and here we have this hole but we do not have these two studs or a location for those studs so what I'm doing is building a bracket that goes from holes lower in the engine block so if we look here we have these two holes here this is the hole that is common. So I'm gonna bolt the bracket in there and I'm building a bracket from this bolt hole up to the bracket. And I may try to build one from here. I'm not sure that's necessary, but um, as long as we have these two 
that should be plenty sturdy with the way this thing is mounted. So I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so I've got the bracket installed here. Had to put a little bend in it because this is actually lower than that section. We don't need these bolt holes for anything. That was a, I think that was an engine mount for like the T5 transporters or something. The engine mount comes off on the side. Um, so this is really sturdy. I painted it black so that it just kind of blends in. And then the engine mount from uh, actually goes here, here, and over here underneath the, or just above the water pump. So the front engine mount will be here. So this doesn't affect anything. So I think that's gonna work out fine. So the next order of business is getting the new timing belt in place. So we're replacing the belt, the tensioner, the pulley, and the water pump. So you can see here, I already have my, my crank locked at uh, top dead center. I'm gonna stick a pin in right here to lock all this stuff in place. But first I have to, uh, I have to remove this pulley and the rear pulley, which is the timing pulley. It has these little notch, these little tabs. These are for the ASZ um, computer sensor. And my BLS sensor has different notches, different tabs. So I have to remove that inner, the inner uh, pulley. The tooth pulley is fine. I can use it. There's no difference in those. It's just the, the rear pulley. And I have a puller that you have to use for that. So I'm gonna remove all of these items and um, start getting the, start uh, clean it. I'm gonna replace this sensor. The sensor is a, this is the timing sensor. It has a black plug here. My sensor has a gray plug. Not sure if it's any different, um, but the I'm gonna while I've got everything apart, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my sensor on here, and then we're uh, we're ready to put the timing belt on. So this is the pulley, the pulley puller. Uh, you got three bolts here. They have a, a shank on them, so they just basically bottom out into the pulley or the, the cam sensor doohickey. I don't know what you'd call this thing. It's a big mass. But these bolts bottom out against that. There's no need to get them super tight. And now we're just gonna tighten up here. The edge, the end of the cam is a, a tapered fit. So as soon as it breaks loose, it's loose. There's no, you don't have to just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. It should just pop right off. Uh, there's, I believe there's a keyway in there, so it will line up with the, should line up properly on the cam. Uh, so let's see how this thing. Now I've got the original bolt in there. Uh, it looks like my bolt is turning. So it's threading in as I'm threading in, so I'm not sure that's really doing anything. All right, so let me reconfigure here. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken a long bolt and it's basically bottomed out into the cam, but the bolt is not threaded in. It's just bottomed out. It's a much smaller bolt than what holds the cam on. So now this should, this should function properly now. And there he goes. See? All right, so it's done. Okay, so this is the inner pulley from the PLS, or BLS, and this is the one from the ASZ. So see the tabs here and a big solid tab. You got two, two little tabs over there, a solid tab, a little tab, 
two little tabs and one tiny tab and one really big tab. <laughs> so they're completely different. So the timing sensor is made to pick up this sensor, this pulley, not this one. So, and you can see here that there's a keyway that's top dead center. So that should slide right into your pulley or onto your cam. There's your keyway. So we're gonna uh, do a little cleanup around this. And I've gotta pull this, this plastic piece apart to get this sensor out, put my new sensor in, and then we'll be ready to put the timing belt back on. Okay, so we had to use the old oil pan because the PD-105 oil pan has a, um, like almost like a recessed area here. <clears throat> and the oil pump gear is larger than the PD-105 gear and it touches the bottom of the oil pan. So we had to use the old oil pan, which did not have this hole for the sensor. So we had to measure that, make sure it was all centered. It's a 40 millimeter hole. We cut that with a, with a hole saw and then used a burr tool to clean up the edges and, and get it nice and perfect. And so now this sensor sits down in here just perfectly. And so now the next task is to thread the pilot holes that were drilled in from the factory. So we, we need to drill those out to the proper size and then tap them. Okay, so this plastic piece, this is the BLS uh, oil guard. You can see here that these tabs are much larger than what's on the ASZ motor. So you cannot use this with the ASZ oil pan. So we exchanged, we just left the ASZ one in there and then our oil pump sprocket is, is considerably larger. The other pump probably didn't exceed this top bolt and you can see how much higher it is from that bolt there. So when I put the BLS oil pan on there, it just rocks on top of that gear. So we now have the, this is the ASZ motor uh, oil pan. We have the sensor drilled and tapped and bolted in. And uh, now we are ready to put some glue on this and we'll get it bolted onto the engine. And that will make the engine like 99% complete. I'm still waiting on a hose that I broke, the, the coolant hose that comes off of the coolant line here. You see the hole in there. There's a coolant line that comes in here. It comes out over here and wraps around the back of the motor. That's what these hoses, one of these hoses goes into that. The other hose will go into this, into this uh, little bong here. So, <clears throat> Now, once we have that part in, then the engine is completely assembled. I know that I may have a problem with my intercooler pipe interfering with this, this new uh, coolant inlet or outlet. So we may have to do some modifications to the, to the boost hose or replace the boost hose with something like a silicon hose or something like that. But we also, this morning I put the new, or I put the Bosch um, fuel pump and um, vacuum pump on. The one that was on here was a Luke, and the where this where this um, vacuum line, or maybe it was a vacuum line on the back here. Yeah, where this vacuum line here goes into the back, the Luke was like really loose and wobbly, and that didn't seem right. They had also painted it pink, so I didn't like that. And uh, doing a little research, it seems that the Bosch is a higher quality pump and tends to give a better service life. So I just went ahead and put that on. I have the Luke. Uh, if, I, if this one gives me any problems, I have the Luke I can just put back on here, but I'm just gonna see how this one 
and works and use it. All right, so we're gonna finish putting the oil pan on and then uh, we're gonna try to get the transmission and clutch and all that stuff bolted on. Okay, so we have the engine installed and most everything is assembled. We still need to put in the battery in the battery box, the air box, and the core support and radiator condenser, uh, intercooler, and then, um, but first, I've already filled it with oil. First, I'm going to crank it and get oil and fuel flowing. Uh, no fuel injectors will be hooked up, but the fuel pump is hooked up. So we'll get fuel flow, we'll get oil flowing through the engine, and then um, we'll put all the glow plugs in, and and then we'll um, we'll crank it and see if it runs before we before we put all this other stuff back together. So soon, soon. Okay. Okay, so we have the engine in. We have everything assembled, I believe, that needs to be assembled before we try to crank it. I wanna show you what I had to do here to the intercooler pipe. I'm not sure you can see it, but um, back in there, you can see the, the clamp. I had to put a 90 degree elbow and a piece of pipe in there to extend this pipe, because this pipe used to go into the engine block right here. Since that uh, inlet tube is not there, we're using the, um, the it comes out of this coolant, um, I'm not sure what this is, it's not where the, it's not where the thermostat is, it's this housing here. And we'll show you the part number because you can just buy that. Let's see if I can get that in video. Yeah, there we go. So you can use this part number and do what we're doing. If you can find an engine that doesn't have this particular uh, junction. So this, this hose goes straight through and that's a heater hose back here. That goes to the firewall. And then this piece here you can see it just barely behind the intercooler pipe. It comes down and goes to the oil cooler and then comes out of the oil cooler and back into this pipe that goes from here all the way around to the back that also is a heater hose. The heater hose, the other heater hose, either the return or the pressure, I'm not sure which one it is, but one heater hose comes into this, this plastic tube the other heater hose comes into this tube. So now the intercooler pipe did not fit. So what I had to do is I used a heat gun and I heated up this entire area here and flattened it out with a, uh, with a, with a large socket and it made it, made it, more flat here so that it's not touching. You can see here, I've got just a little bit of room there. Now, I did cut this bracket off. That bracket goes up to behind the motor and that one is not going to be used because if I have this mounted the way it's supposed to be, this, this pipe that comes down here comes right into the top of this intercooler tube. So I've, I've relocated the intercooler tube just as you can see here, it's still like mobile. Now, it's supposed to mount into the, somewhere here into the uh, oil pan. And you can see where it's located here. Now I can bring it down and get it closer to that location, but it, it's, not, it's not gonna get to where it's supposed to go because it's, it's hitting this pipe here and it's also hitting back here. Um, and you can see this, there's actually, there's actually a depression in the pipe for this. This is the uh, clutch cables. So there's a depression in the pipe there. So now I'm gonna have to put 
something on top of that to keep it from wearing down. Uh, some sort of padding or plastic, you know, something that would protect it. And then here, it's, you can see here, it's this, this mount should be mounted to a bracket that comes out over here. So this is just kind of a temporary thing. I think I'm going to have to build this pipe out of some custom intercooler tubing but I'm gonna have to order that, so I'm just trying to make this work good enough to hook up to the intercooler here. So I've got some, I've got some play. It will move around. If I can get this to mount into the intercooler, then that's really all I need it to do at the moment. And then uh, once we have it mounted into the intercooler and I can make that all work, <clears throat> we'll, we'll, I'll order uh, some silicone uh, intercooler piping and maybe like use this elbow here, cut it somewhere in here, and then make my own custom intercooler pipe from here back to the back elbow. So we'll see how that all plays out. But right now we have everything hooked up. We have all the wires connected. We have all the hoses connected. Um, we do not have the glow plugs in. I want to crank it without the glow plugs. So those are out. That'll let the engine just spin over really fast. It'll pump oil into the top of the cylinders and get oil flowing everywhere. Then we'll put the glow plugs back in and then we'll try firing it up and let it run for a few minutes with, without coolant and, and that kind of stuff once we feel like that that's complete and it's running and and acting properly then then we'll assemble the front end and make it run make it drive around the block so uh, i put a new slave cylinder in so i just bled that and now i need to put the the battery back in and hook all that back up and then once that once the battery is in I believe I can uh, try and crank it. So I'm going to get that done now. Okay, so I've got the battery in. I have disconnected the fuel injection system. Uh, so I'm going to uh, leave those open. And now we're going to turn it over. see there my glow plugs are not doing anything during parking mode motion detection recording one. continuous recording will now start okay i think that's probably good So that should have pumped at least a little bit of oil up into the cylinders and um, even maybe even pump some gas around in the system, just not into the injectors. So now I'm going to plug everything in and uh, see if I can crank it. Okay, guys, well, we've got it running. Got everything hooked up. Got water in the radiator. Uh, we're currently trying to fill it up now. Uh, you can see it's not anywhere close to temperature uh, but what we've got is something going on with the glow plug light which in my research doesn't mean anything about glow glow plugs it's um, you know some kind of engine fault and then we also have the engine fault the light I think the little light bulb here I think that's for the fog lamps because we don't have those hooked up yet the hood is off so that when it's open and I think we can cut the, the ESP I think I have to be in gear to cut it off but <clears throat> so so far so good sounds good it's running good running smooth so um, we plug the computer in and it 
could not read the OBD2, so I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, we're gonna, uh, we're just wanting to get it up to temperature and let things kind of um, settle in, and then we'll see if we can run a code again. But yeah, so far so good. All right, guys, we're driving the Caddy again. So we did a test drive, got it all together. Got all the codes cleared, and um, everything is running and operating as it should. Air conditioner still works. <laughs> so this was a, a successful repair that I didn't really want to do, but now it's done. So if you have any questions about what I did and how I did it, I'll try my best to answer them. And, um, and if you have this kind of problems, then good luck to you. Hopefully it works out for you as, as good as it did for me. It wasn't great, but it, it worked out, uh, money wise. It worked out a lot better than I was anticipating. I think all in all, I spent maybe close to a thousand euro and that's, uh, that's including struts brakes brake pads um and a bunch of other like little little things so it's good good for um for what i got done that's a a pretty pretty good price so let me know if you have any questions comments uh just comment down below and i'll do my best to answer anything i can but thanks for watching